It's blue and orange skies for Knicks fans right now as the Knicks hold a two games to one lead over the Cavaliers in their first round best of seven series. Also, Knicks fans, they got a new anthem from my guy, Sky Zoo. He's a talented lyricist from Brooklyn who recently dropped his new single, Blue and Orange Everything, with the new track and the good vibes surrounding the Knickerbockers. I thought it was time to check with Sky. You see him right there. He joins me now. Sky, what's going on, man? How you doing? Peace, peace. What's up, brother? I'm doing good, man. I know you're doing good. The Knicks are up two games to one in the series. I know you got to yeah. be excited about everything. Um, so we're, yeah. we're going to get into it. But first, I wanted to talk to you about the new single, Blue and Orange Everything. It's been receiving a lot of attention from Knicks fans. Can you tell us a bit about the inspiration behind the song and why you decided to make a new Knicks anthem? Oh, man. First off, good to be up here. Thanks for having me, as always, man. And, um, yeah, the way the record came about, you know, I thought about what's pretty much been our anthem for, I don't know, <laughs> almost 30 years now, which is a Go New York Go. And, um, you know, everyone loves that record. It's a cult classic. If you're from New York, you know that record. Whether you are a Knicks fan or whatever, you know that record if you're from New York, especially the era of, of 94 and onward, you know, when it, when it was blasting off. And I just thought about that record and was like, man, all these years, nobody redid Go New York Go. People have done songs for the Knicks or tried to do songs for the Knicks, but no one ever did Go New York Go over. So I was like, yo, let, let's flip that. Let's do that. Let's sample that and make something brand new and make something that really takes it, you know, for the new generation. And uh, I called up my man, Mark Infinite. Shout out to Mark Infinite, a wonderful producer who I've worked with for a lot of albums now on different records. And um, I told him what it was. The funny thing is Mark is from D.C., so he didn't know about Go New York Go. And that's a testament to being a Knicks fan and being in New York. If you're in New York, you knew about it, you know. So he didn't know about Go New York Go. So I had to send him the YouTube link and break the history down. And he loved it. And it's funny because us making this record turned him into a Knicks fan. <laughs> he's now like, yo, I'm, I'm riding with, with the Knicks, man. I'm riding with it. As of two weeks ago, he's like, I'm riding with the Blue and Orange. Like, you know, us doing this record turned him into a Knicks fan, pulled him from the Wizards or whatever, you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, that, that was the inspiration behind it. I just felt it was time for an update on a classic. And um, it's been ringing off everywhere. You know, ESPN, shout to Alan Hahn. He's been going crazy with the record. Yep. Shout to my man, Daryl Brown at um, Sirius XM NBA Radio. He's been going crazy with the record. You know, it's, it's been all over. My man, Ian Beckley, has been showing it a ton of love. And the people are going crazy. They're like, yo. This is what we need, and I don't know what else is going on out here, but <laughs> this one right here is the one, you know. So it's been dope, man. I just wanted to do something for us as a city, as a team, as a culture, for the colors that we that we rep and that we bleed. And if you know me, you know the, the double entendres are there, man. You know, oh, they're um, there. They're there. Infamous enough where the havoc could do you proud. You know, that was a mob deep shout. Infamous havoc. You know, um, the garden is Eden. Concrete jungle, but the garden is Eden. Uh, the pressure is insanity because we don't do L's. Talking about Jeremy Lin being insanity. overweight. Like, this, mm -hmm. yeah, there, there's, I'm still going to be me. So the entendres are there, man. The doubles and all that are there. Welcome to the Terror Dome hosted by the franchise. I'm shouting out Chuck D. And, and I'm shouting out CDP from Nick Fan TV. Yep. So, you know, it, it, I'm going to be me no matter what I do. And and it's been a, it's been a nice ride with yeah, I, mean, I loved it for everything that you just mentioned, uh, your lyrical ability on it, that definitely was showcased. And then, like you said, the fact that as somebody like myself who grew up hearing that Go New York, Go New York song, how it kind of flipped the classic, and we still had the essence of that in the, the hook and the chorus there, too. You talked yeah. about how the song has been resonating with fans and the response that you, you've seen. Like, what about on social media? What have people been telling you about the track and just how much they love it and, you know, things that people have been putting it to? Because, you know, all the ways you see it in videos, different things. What, what's it been yeah. like seeing that response to a new or, you know, a remix on a Knicks anthem? Oh, it's been overwhelming. You know, everyone's like, man, this needs to be our new anthem. This needs to be the new joint. You know, my part of my thought process behind it was I thought about when the Knicks come out every night you know, player intros and everything like that. And when they're shouting them out and, you know, at guard, Jalen Brunson, you know, at forward, Julius Brandon. I thought about that. And that was how I got to where I got sonically as far as the production and where we went with it and how it breaks down at the end. I thought about, man, what if the Knicks did use this as intro music at the Garden every night, you know? So I, I, when I put the record together from the way I wrote it to the breakdown to 
the way the record ends with just the instrumentation and the live trumpet with the harmony mute on it and the string section that I brought in and all those different things, that was with all of that in mind, you know? So it wasn't just grab a beat and just go off. You know right. me, the way I make my music is hip hop and it's, it's raw and it's dirty, but then it becomes this grand musical composition by the end of it. You know, that is truly a part of my DNA musically. So all of that's there. I said, let's take Go New York Go and add some dirty drums to it and add double entendres and add live trumpets and, and live string sections. Let's go all the way. Yeah, you definitely went all the way. And you just made me think of something now, which is like the Knicks need to use this as an intro music. Like it needs Absolutely. to happen. Absolutely. Somebody Without reach out to Sky, doubt. let us get it happening. We got to get this as intro music for the Knicks because I that, mean, it's a new that's anthem. That's what I want. It's, it's, that's, that's what you want, That's right? what I want for next season, man. You know, we, we've had... The same intro music for a minute now. Yeah. You know, shout the Swift Beats, who, who did the joint that they play every night. Yep. And I was like, let's flip that. It's been about 12 years. Let's flip that. <laughs> you know time. what I mean? And, that, and that's no knock. You know, that was a right. banger for years. Let's flip that now, you know? And, and that was a part of my thinking as well. Just doing something for us, you know, doing something for us to make it go. And uh, I got to shout out uh, Jesse Itzler, who was the originator and creator of Go New York Go. He reached out on Instagram showed a ton of love. He tagged the Knicks. He was like, man, y'all got to show this some love. This is crazy. Nice. You know, we started DMing back and forth and everything. So shout out to Jesse Itzler because he created Go New York Go. So for him to give the nod, he was like, yo, I love it. He was like, thanks for including me in this crazy joint that you did, you know. So he showed a ton of love, man. So shout out to him. And he's an extremely accomplished individual. So And a creator of a cult classic. Yeah. So, you know, it, it get no better than that. No, it doesn't get any better than that. Shout out to Jesse on that one. So, all right, Sky, we, I'm glad we got to talk about the track. I'm loving the new track. It's definitely a dope one. So let's talk about the Knicks, right? Big victory in Game 3. Madison Square Garden was rocking. What was your thoughts about what we saw in the effort from the Knicks in Game 3? Oh, it was locked down. Locked down, you know, from, from front to back, A to Z, locked down. And it needed to be. You know, going into it, I think if you know basketball, you knew if we don't get this one, it might be a tall hill for us to climb up. You know, after the way game two went and us kind of getting rocked a little bit, getting hit in the jaw real hard, you knew if you know basketball, yo, man, we got to get this one. And we got it. And we got it in a resounding fashion. It wasn't winning by one at the buzzer. It was buttoned up from beginning to end. And uh, I, I think that's a testament to the energy in the building. You know, I think that's a testament to... 19,000 leaning in a huddle, like I said on the record, you know, <laughs> screaming like a number 19 in a tunnel. You know what I mean? It, it, it's a testament to us as a fan base and how we show up and show out for our team. And I think with that, it gets no better than that. And when you have 19,000 people screaming for you all in a huddle together, that's why I said that on the record, 19,000 leaning in a huddle. It's like if Tibbs is calling the team together, and everyone's in a huddle, it's not just 15 players. It's 19,000 players because we all in on the same accord and we got this team's back. So I think that win was 50% team, 50% arena. <laughs> you know what I mean? Us in the arena going ballistic and giving them the energy that they need. I mean, we saw Jalen Brunson catch a yam. You know what yeah, we, we saw don't Jalen see Brunson that often. Yam yeah, with the left, you know? Like, that. that's being at the crib. And, and that means a lot. That meant a lot for sure. Okay, so 2-1 lead for the Knicks right now. They've got a chance to take a commanding lead on Sunday. What are your thoughts on their chances of winning the series and advancing to the next round, especially if they take care of business in game four on Sunday at home? I definitely think we can knock it out. You know, I definitely think this is something where it's going to be a good series. It's going to be a back-and-forth series. This was predicted as the best series so far in the first round because a lot of the other series are kind of lopsided. Like, you know this team is going to win. You know that team is going to bottom out. A lot of it's been that. But everyone was looking forward to this series. Like, they match up really well together. This is going to be get your popcorn, get everything you need, and have a seat. You know, and, and it's showing that. You know, the first game was crazy. Second game, we got spanked, and that's cool. Third game, we came back and did the spanking. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's been right. And um, I think we can pull this off. I do. I think if there was anybody that we could match up well with and we can kind of hit them in the jaw back, I, I think it's this one. You thought it was this one. All right, last thing I got to ask you, Scott. I've known you for yeah. a while. You've been a diehard Knicks fan for years. 
How does it feel for you to see this team playing so well? And you kind of hit on this before, but bringing that excitement back to Madison Square Garden. You and I, we grew up in the 90s. We saw that energy in the garden. This team maybe, possibly, seems like they're bringing that energy back. For you as a Knicks fan, what does it mean for you to see the energy back in the building? I love it. You know, it's showing a cohesive team. It's showing being on a certain accord, a certain page. It's showing a scrappy nature. You know, I forgot who I was talking to or where I heard it from or something. It might have even been something I heard on TV. I can't take all the credit as if I was speaking to someone one-on-one. But wherever I heard it, they said every time the Knicks are doing great as far as the playoffs, as far as a potential championship run, the finals, whatever it may be, it's because of us having a blue-collar, hard-nosed team every single time. You know, when the team seems like it might be getting pretty and glossy, that's when things kind of bottom out a little bit. But if you go back to the 2012-2013 season with my man Melo and JR and, you know, Tyson and Shump and Amari and all of them, you had a blue-collar kind of team with your guy at the top of the mountain and Melo leading the charge. When you go back to 94, it was Ewan and Stark. We go to 99, it was Allen Houston. But you had a blue-collar group of guys around it, and I think that's where we are now. And, you know, we got a pit bull in, in, um, in Jalen Brunson, and he's proven to be – our piece at the top of the mountain, but also a blue collar guy. The way he plays is so scrappy and hard nosed and, you know, get your, get your hard hat and your lunch pail and go to work, you know, and Julius has been showing why he's a 20 something point guy at night, 20, what, 24 and nine, 23 and nine, whatever it may be. You know, all of those things are adding up, you know, quickly has been going nuts. Quickly got robbed. He should have been six man of the year. I don't remember nothing. Malcolm Brogdon did. No <laughs> shot to him. I don't remember nothing Malcolm Brogdon did, but I remember quickly going bananas every other night when they said, you know what, you got to start tonight. You got to be the sixth man who's the first man. So, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so it's been, it, it's been really dope to see this team be the essence and epitome of New York. The yeah. Concrete, you know, the, the grit. And it's, it's been dope. And I'm hoping we can pull off a miracle. You know, this season is, what, 50 years since the last chip? You know what? Because that was 73. Yep. This season has been 50 years since the last chip. I'm not going to say anything else because I don't want to jinx nothing. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> we just going to have a good time. That's it. We're just going to enjoy the ride. That's it. That's it. There you it. go. You just got to enjoy the ride. Well, hey, look, I think you're right, Sky. The energy is back in MSG. I think there's something to what you just said about the hard blue collar working team that we're seeing that we remember growing up in the 90s seeing and watching and this team is certainly has the energy you know what's helping with the energy sky your new yeah. song blue and orange everything blue and orange everything there you blue go. and orange everything everywhere right now everywhere that you stream music everywhere that you buy music available right now online um it is truly truly a magnetic Knicks theme. It is something that should be the new Knicks theme. Absolutely. I, without a doubt. I definitely think so, man. I love the track. If you haven't heard the track, like Sky said, check it out. Available everywhere. Streaming, purchase, do whatever you got to do. Get that track. It's a really great one. That is Sky Zoo, the great lyricist from the best borough, which is Brooklyn. That is for sure. <laughs> Sky, it's always good to talk. When I get to talk hip-hop and Knicks with you, I'm always happy to do it. Whether you come here in the studio, we do it remote, it is always good. I will talk to you soon, man, and uh, we'll see how the Knicks fare in this series against the Cavs. Appreciate you, brother. And like you said, from the best borough from Brooklyn, but when it comes to these Knicks, it's like I said, it's one team in the city, know what it is. Empire, state of mind, aiming over the bridge. Talk to us one time. There you go. Sky Zoo, leaving you with some bars. Thanks, Sky. Appreciate it, man. Yeah.